Thank goodness you're here. The Tech News was almost offended. JK, the Tech News cannot be offended. It is not a person. Reviews of one of the two laptops that Apple has slapped its new M2 chip into so far are out. And the consensus seems to be that while the company's second gen SoC definitely brings some performance gains, it's hard to recommend grabbing it when it comes buried inside the same old boring 13 inch MacBook Pro design. Sure, the M2 performs a bit better than the M1, but is that saying much when you're comparing a supposedly pro laptop to a chip you can find in the iPad Air? Some reviews noted that a MacBook Pro with an M1 Pro chip can still get up to double the performance of the M2 in some cases. Plus, do you wanna be seen buying a new laptop that still has the touch bar on it? That would probably be so embarrassing for you. The M2's value proposition might make a little more sense when the new MacBook Air shows up, or better yet, when it comes in its inevitable upgraded M2 Pro model. So stay tuned for that episode where we scrutinize those products for anything we could make a joke about. In other product review news, Intel's ARC A380 desktop graphics card has received one of its first full reviews, courtesy of Chinese tech channel. Shh, I'm not gonna say it right. It's, it's anglicized. Shen, Shen Medunen Si. I tried on Billy Billy. As expected, the card was able to keep pace with and even outperform a Radeon RX 6400 and GTX 1650 in some synthetic benchmarks, but performed significantly worse in every real world gaming scenario. If you're thinking, oh, oh, that's because the drivers probably aren't optimized. Good job. That seems to be the prevailing explanation among speculationists on the internet right now. If so, Intel better get those drivers in shape before they launch the Intel Serpent Canyon NUC with its ARC A770M GPU, which was leaked on another Chinese social media site, Baidu. Prepare for more info dumps like this out of China as Intel continues its launch in that country, starting with the low-end GPUs and working their way up to the flagship models. I'm guessing by that time, Intel hopes to have its drivers in shape because they'll have all that training data from Chinese gamers. My idea of optimizing drivers basically just looks like Reboot. It's a great show. I'm Bob. And sorry, non-Canadian listeners, but we're gonna talk about our own country for a second because the Canadian government has just voted to advance the controversial Bill C-11, AKA the Online Streaming Act, which would require platforms like YouTube, Netflix, and even Pornhub to change the way they serve up content. Proponents of Bill C-11 say the act is needed to place digital distributors under the same regulations that apply to traditional broadcasters, defining and promoting content that qualifies as Canadian, we call it CanCon up here, not to be confused with the much more interesting Cancun. But critics argue that platforms would be forced to prioritize and deprioritize certain content for Canadian audiences, potentially affecting viewership at home and abroad. C11 now moves to a final vote in the Senate, so if you don't want this to happen, write to your representatives, and if you do want it to happen, I don't know, Drink a bag of milk and chill, I guess. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Vulture, provider of high performance cloud servers, bare metal storage, and managed Kubernetes. You can easily deploy your preferred OS through 12 pre-selected options and even bring your own ISO. It's like a barbecue. And with 25 server locations worldwide, you'll enjoy low latency wherever your users are. Plus, the new Vulture Kubernetes engine takes the hard work on for you so you can operate and scale with confidence. Try Vulture today and receive an exclusive 30-day $150 code for new signups at the link below. Okay, here comes the quick bits. They're gonna be in and out. You won't even, you won't even notice them. You won't remember them. A new tech industry group called the Metaverse Standards Forum has been created by a number of tech giants, including Microsoft, Epic Games, Nvidia, Qualcomm, and of course, Meta. They almost sat out though. As the name implies, the forum will be working on developing interoperable standards between different VR and AR ecosystems, something Apple and Google are apparently not interested in, as they haven't joined the club yet. They didn't even respond to the RSVP. Mark stayed up all night working on it. Pretty rude. How dare they? They were partying in their own private metaverses. GitHub has publicly released its AI-powered coding assistant, Copilot, as part of a $10 per month subscription, although it's free for students and maintainers of popular open source projects. Copilot hasn't been free of controversy, with some criticizing the fact that it previously required paid software to use, and others probably asking if the code generated by the AI is sentient for some reason. 
You have to name every string that it writes and assure it that it matters. You're a parent now. In other Microsoft news, because Microsoft owns GitHub, the company may have blocked downloads of Windows 10 and 11 for users in Russia. Multiple reports make it seem like that's the case, but Microsoft hasn't officially commented on the issue. They did publish a blog post, though, today, detailing their efforts to help Ukraine fight back against Russian attacks, both cyber and otherwise, so I don't think it would be super out of character. Like, I don't think anyone's saying, what, but why? North American phone aficionados excited for the release of the much-hyped Nothing Phone 1 received some disappointing news today when the company, headed by former OnePlus chief Carl Pei, announced the Phone 1 would not be getting a widespread release in the US or Canada. So I guess North American fans of Nothing will get what they wanted after all. And Amazon has unveiled what it calls its first fully autonomous mobile robot called Proteus, which can move large carts around its warehouses. Proteus arrives at a crucial time for Amazon, which just had a memo leak showing that executives think the company's high turnover rate has almost depleted the entire available workforce. <laughs> Whew, close one, Amazon. Whew. Talk about a success story. And this episode has successfully concluded. Come back on Friday for more tech news or it will be offended. I lied at the beginning. Tech like this sentient. <laughs>